My name is Ambrose. Ambrose Chibuka Mchivi. I'm a specialist in human performance systems. In simple terms, that's the art and science of bringing out the best in people. And I've been in this practice since 1998. I'm also a career mentor, a career strategist, and I provide career guidance to all categories of people. I've done this for over 25 years. I've done it for secondary school students. I've done it for university students. I've done it for professionals out there, people preparing for retirement. In my previous career years, I worked as a classroom teacher in university and also as a classroom teacher for one year in a community secondary school that I co-founded in 1997, and that's Kamda Community Secondary School in Impata Sub-County in Mukono District. Now, over the years, I've had the privilege to interact with all sorts of educators. I've been privileged, again, to mentor people who teach at different levels. And the purpose of this video is to share with you insights that I've learned over the years. In today's video, we specifically want to look at this whole notion of university education. And why is it important? In this book, which I wrote, first edition, 2003, second edition, 2008, and third edition, 2018, which is this current one. The title is After University, What Next? But actually, I will say, I was rather shy to write the real title that was at the center of my heart and in the middle of my mind. And since we are having this conversation, I'll tell you what the actual title behind this one is. Although this one says, after university, what next? What I hid behind is, you went to school, so what? Yes, you heard me right. <laughs> you went to school, so what? And today, because we want to focus on that very challenging subject of, is it really worth it to go to university? Yeah. On the surface, it's obvious. Everybody who wants to be successful should go to university. At least that's what the dominant paradigm, the thinking in society is. In fact, many parents will say to themselves, look, if I do not succeed at getting my child into university, I have failed as a parent. And many young people also will feel, well, if I do not perform well enough to qualify for university, then maybe among my siblings, I'm the biggest disappointment. Or even my peers, how will they look at me? I could be the only one who hasn't gone to university. So I'm here to argue a point, and that point is, you see, <laughs> The university epidemic is misguided. And that is a point I belabor in this third edition. Those of you who have uh, acquired the third edition of After University What Next, on page 93, that's where I argue. This whole section between page 54 uh, from page 54 up to page uh, 106, I have a chapter there that is understanding 21st century careers. Now, in that chapter, I discuss 10 insights that for me I have distilled over the years and characterize the key attributes of 21st century careers. 
And now the ninth one, which is on page 93, is the university epidemic is misguided. So you may be asking yourself, what is it that Ambrose is calling a university epidemic? And isn't that being too radical? Why do you call it an epidemic in the first place? Let me explain. You see, like I did say, every other family feels and thinks and is convinced that if they don't succeed at sending their children to university, they are a failure. And every young person wants to go to university. Now, I'm using a generalization because majority of. And this generalization is actually corroborated by what is happening on the ground. Now, check this out. We have about 55 universities in Uganda. Let me use the Uganda case. 55 universities. And we are still counting. The number is growing. If you compare this with the other tertiary institutions, which are outstanding in nature, to that level of the university, they are far fewer than that. Okay, so why is it that? And, and oh, before I forget this, all these universities are academic universities. Now, if you want to understand why that is so important for you to pay attention to, I want you to look at the numbers of young people coming out of university, very well educated, but they cannot find employment. You'll ask the question, why? Well, that's a subject we can delve deeper into, and we will delve deeper into in, in the subsequent videos. But today I want to limit myself to this uni university epidemic thing. How did we come to this mix-up, which is making us end with, I'm sure there is a young person there who graduated from university, and you have spent a couple of months, a couple of years, and you have never found a meaningful job, and you are still on the streets. Or you did find a job, but you feel severely underemployed. This video is for you. Or you are there and you are asking yourself, this investment that I made could be your parents who paid, could be government that paid, could be yourself. You hustled to take you through university. And now you're looking at your papers and you flash back and you look at the energies you put in, the time you spend. And you think about the opportunity cost, the alternatives you forewent, you had to forego in order for you to pursue this degree. And you're asking yourself the question, was it worth it? Yes, that's the question I'm here to confront. And I want to help you understand where you could have gone wrong, where the system could have gone wrong, and how you can correct that at a personal level. Now, get me right. I am not trying to diss university education. I am a product of university education. Not only that, I have taught in university. Not only that, I do train people who teach in university. That's not the end of it. I actually do promote universities. I sit in university boardrooms. And um, I strongly believe that we need university education if our society is to develop. I believe that uh, no society or no country can actually produce serious uh, innovators and inventors and entrepreneurs at a sustainable scale 
if you do not have a critical mass of university graduates. So I just wanted to allay that. But what I call the epidemic is this misconception which has turned out to be a widespread uh, deception, self-deception, that everyone must have a university degree in order to be successful at whatever endeavor they were created for or they are here to fulfill. That is the misguidance that I'm talking about. And I want to help whoever is watching me and is already trapped in this. Why I call it an epidemic is because it is sweeping across the entire society. So, let's use the analogy of a hospital to understand how this university epidemic is making many high potential young people live as though they never existed, to live on the margins of life. If you have a hospital and you have a hundred doctors, but then you have 30 nurses, that is an inverted structure. You cannot sustain that hospital because you have more of the high-end knowledge workers and you have less of the technicians. The nurses here are the technicians who are supposed to be in far bigger numbers than the doctors because the doctor will do the diagnosis, the doctor will do all those technical things that they are supposed to be doing at their level. And then now the nurses who are supposed to take care of the patients, dispense medicine and so on, those are supposed to be in their hundreds, even if the doctors are in their tens. Now what we have in places like Uganda, when you have more people crossing from secondary school to universities, which are academic universities, there is a difference between academic universities and technical universities. Academic universities go high voltage in theory and less on practice. So, if you graduate and you find millions of other young people who have graduated and they have academic degrees, but then the labor market, who are the people that it needs most? It needs more nurses than the doctors, if we are to take the analogy of the hospital. What will that mean? That the more doctors you keep churning out, in the case of this particular hospital, the less likelihood that they will have room for employment. This is what is happening to societies that have more of their young people pursue academic qualifications as opposed to business, technical, and vocational qualifications. So, let me help you understand this in a simpler way. I want you to look around your environment, where you are now. If you are in office, look around office. If you are at home, look around the home. And look at all the things that you use at home. You look at the furniture. You look at the books. You look at the different things, the flowers, the flower pots. You look at what is uh, in the kitchen. You look at your wardrobe. You look at, you know, your shoes, everything around you. And I will tell you that for each of those things, which are the items that we use in real life, which are the items that you find in the marketplace, therefore, which are the items that are the subject of economic or business transactions? 
you go to town to the shops because you want to buy clothes, you want to buy plates, you want to buy this or that. And think about it. All these items, the process of producing them, the process, the value chain of trading them up to the last consumer, it generally speaking, that, co that process does not require any academic qualification. You will tell me, but wait a minute, what about the technology that makes the, the garments? Yes, that's true. The technology that makes the garments, you will need someone who is high voltage in terms of academic qualification. That person will most likely be the engineer at the back end, and that's all. So most likely for every one engineer who is involved in the value chain of producing this book, you will find again a value chain of so many other people who are using skills and knowledge that does not require someone to even have gone beyond senior four. And that is the reality of the marketplace. So, it means that the more young people you have without the skills that enable them to produce and participate actively and optimally in the value chain of things in the marketplace, the more unemployed people you will have. It's as simple as that. So, let me conclude this point by highlighting what I have learned. Over the years, I have been doing career guidance, career mentorship, as I said, for secondary school students, universities, and even uh, above that, interviewing young people, having conversations with them. This is what I have found. About 60% of young people who enroll in universities for academic programs, actually what they are looking for in life, they cannot find it in an academic university. But they have been misled by the perception of society around them from their families and the entire society. And if they were to be helped to deeply reflect on what is it, the end game of, of life, what, what they want out of life, what they want to do. Most of them, what they are looking for. And I suspect you will also consider your own ambitions, your own vision, your own aspirations in life against this which I'm putting before you. Most of them, what they are looking for, can only be found in a vocational and technical institution. In fact, what they are looking for does not require someone to serve on the school bench for three years, four years. Most of them, what they are looking for, you can comfortably get it within one year or less, and you fly through life. So, when I say the university epidemic is misguided, this is what I mean. And in the subsequent videos, I want to be able to help you to take you through a step-by-step -step process of enabling you to figure out, one, where you could have gone wrong, and two, and more importantly, how to troubleshoot that. There is a solution. Life is very interesting. There is always a second chance. And so there is a solution. There are a series of solutions, actually. And so what I am here to help you do, and this is why we, I call my platform Career Labs, because this is a laboratory, a big laboratory, where I provide an opportunity to each person 
to enter their own room within the laboratory and begin engineering their own career according to the realities of the labor market. And I will tell you, the opportunities are enormous. They are enormous. You cannot exhaust them, but it takes a different set of lenses in order for you to see these opportunities. In fact, as I conclude, I will read to you what the New Vision wrote about my book when they first reviewed it. That was the first edition in 2004. This is what the New Vision wrote. They say, and I quote, it does not matter at what stage of your life you read this book. It will still be relevant. It will tickle your mind and make you think about the choices you make in your life. It will energize your thinking and make you see opportunities where you previously saw darkness. This last bit is exactly the point of my videos. To help you see opportunities where you previously saw darkness. Don't forget to click on the like and subscribe to our channel. And keep watching Ambrose Chibukam TV videos.